Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Louis, and um, I'm very excited to be part of this um, conference. And um, I'll be talking about hypercarriers for the African markets, right? And um, yeah, my name is Louis White Jenner. I'm co founder of Six Past Years. So, okay, let's proceed. So, a little bit about Louis. So, Louis uh, is a co founder of Six Past Studios a game studio that um, build mobile games in Africa. And I'm currently building um, Game Vast Africa, which is an educational product, um, game product that teaches everything games from um, game development, um, um, 3D modeling and all that. So everything that has to do with the game space. Then um, I'm currently advocating and creating an inclusive game atmosphere in Africa by um, talking in different conferences, um, I'm just basically expanding the, the reach of um, game and preaching the gospel of game, <laughs> right? And um, so um, this is a snapshot of Game Vs Africa, which is a product um, we are building, um, build your game career with Game Vs Africa. And this will be coming up, um, supposed to launch um January and um, basically bringing everybody together. Hey, if you want to learn game, if you want to learn about the game space, game and development and 3D modeling, um, artists um, and all that, anything that has to do with game. So we have um, that um, in this particular pure product, right? Um, okay, so let me proceed. Now, before I talk about hypercarriers uh, in Africa or the African market, I have to give an, an analysis basically on the entire, um, entire um, game ecosystem in Africa. So what is the current game um, state of game ecosystem in Africa. Now, um, let me go by sharing statistics. According to Newzoo, um, which is a, a research um, um, website and all that, they actually um, did a research on the game ecosystem in Africa. And um, that this was last year. And um, from the research, 1.14 billion people in Africa, in the sub-Saharan Africa, and in the population of 1.1 billion people, um, Africa has uh, 186 million people play games. This was in 2021. So it's that means 16% of the African population, they do play games. And when I mean play games, they play games on the regular, right? And um, of these 186 million gamers in Africa, 177 million of them play uh, mobile games. So, uh, so the entire... Sub-Saharan Africa is projected to be the fastest growing um, game uh, industry or industry basically globally, right? Now, of these 186 million gamers, 63 million of them pay for games. You're talking about paying for games, getting uh, assets and all that, buying skins and um, um, device, anything that has to do with games. So 63 million um, people pay for games. Uh, that is 30, 34% of the 186 uh, million gamers. This was projected in 2021. And um, yeah, so South in Africa, basically, we have like six major players in the game space um, countries. Basically, we have um, South Africa, we have Nigeria, we have Ghana, we have Ethiopia, we have Kenya, we have Egypt. So six of these countries are like um, major um, players in terms of um, um, biggest um, game um, network, game industry, um, and all that, everything that has to do with game, right? So in these um, six major countries, uh, South Africa has the highest saturation of gamers with 24 million people that are actually gamers in South Africa. South Africa has a population of about um, 59 million. This was like last year projection. That means 40% of the South African, of South Africans are actual gamers, right? So 27% of the people in Ghana play games. 27% of them play games. 23 in Nigeria are actually gamers. 22% in Kenya, Ethiopia, 13%. Now, this means that South Africa leads the way in terms of total um, gaming revenue with $290 million as of 2021, followed by Nigeria, um, which is um, $185 million. Then Ghana, $42 million. Kenya, 38 Ethiopia, $35 million, right? Um, so through the traditional channels, a higher proportion of South African gamers pay for games, which is 43%. Ghanaians and Ethiopians, 
um, or Nigerians and Kenyans, thirty-two percent, right? So um, that being said, um, what I'm just trying to do is to give you an elaborate um, statistics of what is really happening in the game space, right, in Africa, and um, there are lots of um, Africa had a decline of games, you know, basically the game industry. So we had like um, lots of persons. Um, the game was not really that. Um, that known. So unlike the normal general tech space where you get to see like the normal front end web developers and all that building for other spaces, the game ecosystem is like a very quiet space in Africa, but um, inside is actually doing um, basically well. Right. So there are lots of things happening in Africa currently. We have like lots of um, developers um, springing forth, lots of studios um, coming out. Um, lots of uh, creative games, lots, lots of successful games, games that are eating up to 5 million um, downloads on the Play Store and all that and all that. And all that. So it's actually a very beautiful um, ecosystem and it's been um, it's exciting growing with it, right? So having known that, um, what is really happening in, uh, in Africa, right, in the game space now? There are issues uh, um, that, are, that is actually affecting the entire game, um, the growth of the game industry, in Africa. So number one is no enough games be built for Africans by Africans, right? Now, what this means is we have lots of gamers in Africa. We have um, amazing gamers. Uh, we have amazing studios, right? But most of the games that are being played by Africans are not African games or that were built by African studios, most of them. So you're looking at um, games like Call of Duty, you're looking at games like PUBG, you're looking at uh, games like Apex and the rest of them, uh, even a millimeter and, and the rest of them. So although these are like global big games, um, the entire world, but um, in terms of the African space, there are no much um, African gamers that are building African uh, African developers being African games. So this is actually an issue, right? Now, the second thing is the job opportunities for game developers. There are no um, much job opportunities for game developers and game designers. I've met some persons that they've been in the game industry for like six, um, three, four years, and um, they've just been struggling. But immediately they switched over from the game space to the other um, tech spaces, they got jobs. So what this means is because there are not much job opportunities in the game space, it is very difficult for people to actually want to go into the game um, industry by development, by even gamers to, uh, to get. So these are like, um, issues that uh, is happening in the African game space, basically, and, and I think it also applies generally. So we have um, unique storytelling and cultural projection. There is no unique storytelling and cultural projection. And what this means is, um, let's take uh, a case study on, on Black Panther, right? Black Panther is what, like one of the most successful movies ever in Africa, even um, because of its African content. Now, um, Africa, like I said, has a, a population of 1.1, um, 1, over, over 1.1 billion um, people with a huge um, majority of them that are active both internet and um, both um, via watching movies, playing video games and all that. Black Panther was that particular project that um, was loved by lots of Africans, not because it was uh, not because it was just a regular African movie but because it actually uh, held or told like beautiful stories about Africa. You get to see, uh, okay, most times most um, projects um, in the movie industry that talks about Africa, they project Africa in a very um, shady way. You get to see um, Africans having like, uh, they, when they project Africa, you're seeing like a very poor region. You're, you're seeing like people suffering. You're seeing, yes, uh, people are actually suffering everywhere basically. But it's actually good, beautiful once in a while to see um, African being talked about or being projected in a beautiful way instead of um, the shady, dark part. Right. So there's not enough um, unique storytelling and cultural projection. And that was one of the success of Black Panther. You could see when Black Panther, this um, Wakanda Forever was pre pre premiered in Nigeria, lots of persons were very excited and uh, it actually gave um, lots of um, beautiful memories and all that. Right. So there is no strong ecosystem that promotes the game um, development and esports generally in in um, Africa. Currently, yeah, we have like lots of beautiful, beautiful, amazing um, developers amazing studios, amazing companies, amazing organizations, Malio, Gema, and Koluya, and the rest of them um, bringing, driving the game ecosystem. But yeah, but because there is no strong um, ecosystem or um, structures that are in place to promote this game space, 
it is very difficult and it's not really not really difficult it's not growing um at as it should right yeah so um the mentality of um the game industry is boring and also for lazy people so this is actually one of the most um talked about um issues why um people are not um don't really go to um play games or enter the game space basically because of the mentality that um the game the game industry um the game industry is uh for lazy people and all that is actually being talked about um here in Africa right so you have um that as a current issue and also there's there are little or no game for educational purposes currently we have like beautiful amazing people um doing that right um creating a beautiful um content um gamification content and all that to promote the educational space in Africa right so um this is like these are like what is um happening in um what is really happening in in Africa right so back to um hypercadros for Africa now before I talk about hypercadros for Africa I have to um take a case study of the president the president uh, is one of the most successful um most of most successful hyper casual game uh that was built by an Africa. But let's just say a summary of um the whole um hyper casuals for the African market, right? So hyper casual games have um exploded in popularity in recent years, and the African market is no exception, right? So these simple addictive games offer players a very quick and satisfying gaming experiences on their mobile devices, right? So one of the key reasons for the success of hyper casual games in Africa is um, the accessibility. So you get um, the game are easy, the games are easy to learn and require little or no previous gaming experiences. So making them um, appealing to a very wide audience, right? So additionally, they often um, free, they are often um, free to download and um, free to play and making them very affordable for players. I know that, right? So another factor contributing to the popularity of hyper casual games in recent um, in, in Africa is that it's about the social aspect of hyper casuals, right? So many of these game games are designed to be played with friends. Uh, many of them are designed to, um, they are very competitive. They are, um, can be played either competitively or cooperatively, and uh, which adds to the enjoyment of um, this um, experience, right? So this social aspect also makes and the game a great way for people to connect and interact with each other. And um, also um, when they are physically apart, right? Um, so however, the success of these um, hyper casual games in Africa um, is not without its challenges. Likewise, every space or every industry that exists, there are always challenges and um, Africa and hyper casual is not, um, um, has its own challenges. So one of the biggest challenges in the hyper casual uh, market is the limited availability of um, high speed internet, right? In many parts of the continent, you're looking at um, Southern African, you're looking at Northern African, Western African, Southern and Central African. So these are like, it's actually a major challenge in the African game space. So if you're looking at building a game, okay, um, this is, what this does is, it it, 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 it makes it very difficult for um, players to assess and play these games, especially um, if the game is large and also if, um, the game has um, to uh, the game is an online game, which means you need your internet device to actually or your data basically to to play these games. So to overcome this, um, um, it, it is very difficult for players to um, move smoothly and all that in in the games, which is which might actually down down play the the game. Now, um, to overcome this particular challenge, many um, game developers. Are focusing on creating lightweight games that can be played on low bandwidth connections. Now, this not only makes the game more accessible um, to players in Africa, but it also allows them to be played on a very uh, on a wider um, range of devices, including older smart older smartphones and tablets. So, basically, the overall popularity of the hypercultural games in Africa is a testament to its accessibility, social aspect, and fun. Uh, fun um, gameplay. So as the market continues to grow, we expect to see an even more innovative and engaging um, games being developed um, for players in the region, either by any studios out there and also um, also um, Africans, right? So talking about um, hypercultural games, um, a case study of the president, which is like one of the most, um, the biggest, um, one, of, one of the 
most successful hyper casual games that was um in, in, in Africa that was built by an African, right? So the president is a hyper casual game um that was developed by um that was developed by um Mikan Studio. Mikan Studio is a studio in Kenya and they put um players in in um in the role of a leader of a president, uh, the leader of a country, right? And um, the president was actually uh, published by, it's been published by um, Crazy Labs, which is a publisher um, um, in um, Israel, right? So the, the president has over, um, I think, 10 million downloads currently on on, on Play Store. I don't know about um, the, the Apple Store. So it has over um, 10 million downloads currently. And um, the game offers a very fast-paced, engaging experience as players are uh, players make important um, decisions and faces um, the challenges that would impact the, the future of their nation. So in the president, players must navigate through the complex um, world of politics and deal with a range of different issues. So from economic policies to foreign um, relations, and so anything that has to do with um, governing of uh, a nation. And I think um, when uh, Meccan was um, being interviewed, he said he actually got inspired by um, Donald Trump um, during his role um, in, in the United States. Right, So that actually motivated him to create a game around this particular, um, um, used the storyline basically, right? Now, um, so players would have to make um, tough decisions in the president and um, balance um, different groups with their countries and all that and all that while trying to maintain um, the popularity with the public. Now, one of the key um, features of the president is uh, it is a really, um, it's, it's a real-time gameplay. So as the game progresses, players must react to events as they happen and make decisions very quickly, right, in order to succeed. So this ad, what this does is, it adds a sense of urgency and excitement to the game. So it keeps the players on the edge and on their seats. So because um, when you're playing the game, you get to see like new events and new things and you need to react like very quickly. So yeah, so the um, the president offers a very high degree of um, um, replayability as no two gamers are of the same. And the game uses a very sophisticated um, artificial intelligence system to generate um, unique scenarios and challenges. Right, the president is a very fun game, and and and, and it's really uh, one of um, the craziest and biggest um, game. And back then, when the president came out, it was actually um, rated um, second um, played game in the United States, right, as of a particular um, period of time. Now, the problems in the hypercultural um, market, African market. So, if you're talking about going to the Africa, this is just like a basic. Um, um, problem, not really basic problem, but what is really happening in the hyper casual um, market in Africa, right? Now, one of the main um, challenges facing the hyper casual gaming market in Africa uh, is the limited availability of and high cost of internet and devices, internet and devices, two separate entities, right? So you get to see um, there are no much, um, there are lots of places where um, have low bandwidth, uh, internet, low internet coverages and all that. And you also have um, um, devices that are not really, um, most persons are really invest, just like some persons invest in like very good phones, but uh, mobile devices, but yeah. So many parts of the continent still have that limited or no access to high, very high speed internet, which makes it very difficult for um, players to download and play games on their mobile devices, especially if the game has to do with, an, if the game is an online game. Yeah. So additionally, many people in Africa cannot afford um, to purchase high-end smartphones and tablets, right, which can limit the type of games that are available to them because we've, we've started seeing um, lots of um, amazing, beautiful games that um, you need, like, very high-spec um, devices to actually enjoy, right? And, um, yeah, so another challenge is the lack of infrastructure and support in the game industry in many African countries. So what this does is... This can make um this uh, makes it very difficult for developers um and studios basically to distribute their game out there. Now this is the state of the problem in the African gaming market, both for hyper casuals, right? I've met um lots of amazing guys, lots of amazing peer persons building that has like several amazing projects, right? So apart from them having several amazing projects, one of the major issues they've had is um how can they uh, 
take this out there, like take it to the next level. Building is, for me, is like the easiest thing, right? Building a game is like one of the easiest things. Publishing is like an entirely whole level, different level altogether. So we've seen like lots of beautiful games that are just being wasted and just being um, they're lying in very, very low state, right? So because of um, the infrastructure that are available or that exists in the whole African um, industry, you get um, low um, games, uh, not much enough games in the market, not good games in enough market. And some of these games are not... Um, being um, displaced uh, or placed out there. One of the success or the major success why um, the president was actually um, successful was because of the publisher, which um, is um, Crazy Labs in Israel. And um, knowing um, Crazy Labs, they have like long um, reach of audiences and, 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 and all that. So it's actually a major problem in the African um, hypercarger games um, market, right? Structures and all that. So you have our experience is that you, the, the real thing is that these challenges can make it very difficult for developers to succeed in the hyper casual uh, market in Africa, except you really have a very good publisher and the issue of um, the devices and point and then connection and all that. So, um, but with the right strategies, everything um, can be really sorted out. So it is possible to overcome these challenges easily and also to create a very successful and popular um, hyper casual game, um, especially if you want to target um, the African market. Right now, like I said, there are lots of amazing developers, lots of amazing persons. We just need like, like a huge um, collaboration and all that to push the game um, one step further. Right. So, so you're looking at um, cost of internet. So, how building the hypercarders for the African market? So if you're considering building hypercarders for the African market, or you have a game and you want to enter the um, African market and all that to assess the 186 million gamers in Africa. That was on last year, and I this is should have um, increased to over 200 um, million gamers plus and all that, right? So if you want to uh, have access to or enter the African market, basically, uh, to build a successful hypercarger game in African or for African gamers, and there are lots of key factors um, you need to consider, right? Um, first off, you need to um, it is important to note that to understand the characteristics and preferences of the African market, which is actually one major key factor. So this includes um, factors um, such as the internet, which is actually a main um, factor in Africa, looking at the cost of internet access and um, also specific genres and game mechanics, right? And um, the use of cultural and linguistic diversity in the region. Now, once you have um, a good once you have a very good um, understanding of the African market, you can begin designing your game that is appealing or that will appeal to um, Africans or African players. Now, this also involves um, incorporating um, African elements in your game. So such as um, African music, African arts, um, African um, words, African folk folklore. So what this does is it gives um, a sense of entitlement and um, belonging that, yeah, this game is actually was built for them, anyway. I mentioned um, Black Panther earlier. The success of Black Panther is very, very crazy. And um, that is because um, seeing Black Panther alone, you can relate to um, some of these things that were being done in the, um, you can actually relate to it. And this actually makes more persons to want to um, play the game and all and, 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 and all that. So, um, so you should focus on um, creating um, games that are simple, easy, addict <laughs> and also like this is like basically the characteristics of hyper casual games simple easy um, accessible by everyone can be played by almost everybody um yeah everybody and everyone every race and every age group right additionally it is important to optimize your game for low bandwidth environments right and also for low devices and that is um for you building hyper casuals for the african market so once your game um was built for a low bandwidth environment and also for low devices. It is um, highly likely to, um, to be successful to grow, right? Um, to get um, good revenues and all that. So this may involve um, the using of um, lightweight game engines and designing your games around smoothly on the wide range, range of devices. But you should also consider the local languages and cultural norms of the region where you're targeting your game. So if you're targeting, let's say, um, you're building a game, basically, I don't think anybody builds 
Yeah, so uh, when you're bidding for the um, African market, there are just lots of things that needs to be done and um, just need to study the African market. Um, it's actually nice um, bidding for Africa and also to tap into um, the African um, game space. Right, and the African um, gamers basically. So either you're a publisher up there, there are like lots of amazing things happening already. Lots of gaming content, um, lots of game studios doing amazing projects. And um, yeah, so we, Africa is growing. And like I said earlier, it's the fastest I'm growing game space. And it would be nice to have um, lots of, um, lots of, lots of um, different um, organizations, companies coming in um, to the African game market. So yeah, so um, that is all for me. And uh, thank you very much. Um, you can, Mostly uh, reach out to me via LinkedIn. I'm Luis White Jenner. I am very much active there. And um, yeah, hope to see you some other time or hear from you. Thank you very much.